Uh, my name is Effie, I'm Director of Engineering at uh, Lumigo. And in the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk about continuous integration and continuous development. Sorry, continuous delivery. Although we do sometimes continuous development on some days of the week. Uh, and you know, while, while working on, on this session, uh, I was starting to think that maybe I need to expand it. Although originally it was only CI, CD. But as I wrote the, the session, I understood that we actually need to talk about uh, the entire development workflow. So um, in Lumigo, we are doing around um, um, hundreds of deployments per day. Uh, we, are doing, we have um, hundreds of millions of, of uh, invocations per month and without downtime. In the following session, I'm going to show you how we do it. I'm going to show you tricks, code snippets, tools that we use, and hopefully it will help you. Oops, sorry. So something very important to say before we start. This is a very opinionated flow. I, I'm not saying this is the only flow, and I'm not saying this is the best flow. Definitely there are better flows depending on what you do, how you do it, how your team is built. So again, took from, take from here the things that you think are relevant for you. Okay, so who am I? Um, I'm dealing with development in the last uh, 12 years, mostly backend and mobile. Um, I started working with serverless, pure serverless, in the last two and a half years, uh, building mostly services in Python and in Node.js. My main expertise is actually the development workflows in the companies that I worked with. Um, I've built the entire development flow in, uh, uh, in Lumigo, and it's a, actually it's a chance to, uh, to tell you that I love to help the community. If any of you have questions about how to implement serverless, specifically with your teams, how to promote it in your company, you're more than welcome to contact me, either through email or through my Twitter account. And on my spare time, I like to play card games. Usually I, I lose money, but <laughs> it works sometimes. So what Lumigo is doing, so for those, actually it's a good chance to ask, how many people here are using serverless in production? Oh, wow, quite a lot, great. So for those of you who are using serverless in production, you probably know that uh, you have a lot of services, a lot of resources. Trying to understand what's going on in case you have a problem is very hard. How the messages pass from one service to another, especially when you have asynchronous flow, is very hard. Lumigo creates a platform that enables you to monitor your serverless application. So. A lot of people ask me why serverless development workflow is different. I mean, wh wh why should it be different from regular development workflows? And I think uh, it's all because of the mindset. Serverless promotes outsourcing. Outsourcing anything that is not core to your main business. So, you know, usually the best example is do I need to manage my own EC2 instance? No, you have a Lambda, but usually that's the easy answer. I mean, that's server. But let me elaborate a little bit more. Do I need to manage my own cluster of CI, CD? No, I don't want to. Do I need to manage my own Git repository? No, I don't want to. Do I need to manage my own uh, code coverage, uh, security audit, uh, you name it, on my own? No, I don't want to. I want others to do it. As, and as you can see, the tools start to change. Um, and usually up until now, the tools were very local. You run things on your computer. And now suddenly, in addition to your production load, suddenly also your tools become very cloud-centric. And the moment you can't run everything on your machine, the moment you need to use other services in order to complete your flow, your flow changes. So what are we going to talk about today? So I'm going to talk about the guidelines that we use in Lumigo in order to build a workflow, um, in order to build it, in order to change it. Uh, we're going to talk about the specific flow itself, which I'm quite sure that you are familiar with, about the development, testing, debugging. I actually sat with someone during the break uh, about how do we test a, a serverless application. It is very hard. Uh, we're going to talk about the deployment process and monitoring. So let's talk about the guidance 
what guides us in Lumigo when we are building our serverless uh, uh, workflow. So, as I said, many of the tools that you use are not running locally. Many of the tools that you use are running in the cloud. So it's very important that in case you have issues, to detect them as early as possible on your laptop. And when I'm talking about issues, I'm not talking about uh, uh, issues in production. I'm where I'm sure everybody knows, and there are a lot of very famous uh, uh, reports that saying that when you find a bug in production, it costs you much more than finding it uh, on your uh, 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 unit testing. I'm talking about simple things like you prefer to run your unit test on your laptop and not let your unit test run on your CI CD uh, machine. And when the unit test fail, it's much harder to debug it on your CI CD machine. You prefer to run things that you can run locally on your machine. Um, make testing, e make test, uh, testing easy. Testing in serverless is very hard, and we're going to talk about it in a couple of slides. If you want to allow your developers to easily test the serverless stack on a real environment, they won't test it. And eventually, your code quality uh, will be reduced. And the next thing is making monitoring and debugging easy. By the way, when I'm talking easy, it's very easy to say easy. And uh, it's very hard in the end to make things easy. And that's what we are going to talk about. We developed a lot of tools in order to make and allow our developers in a click of a button, debug the application in the cloud, uh, uh, run the testing in the cloud, so, uh, uh, it won't, so we won't find issues in production. And last but not least, which I think the most important thing, always let others do the work for you. When you can let others implement the, uh, the feature, the functionality, the tool that you need, let them do that. Don't do it yourself. It will save you a lot of time. Even, with only, even if it only gives you 80% of what you're requesting, most of the time you will save a lot of your development time in doing real stuff, real stuff that your business needs. So this is the high-level overview of a typical development flow. Pay attention that I marked in, uh, uh, in black the things that are running in the cloud, that are not running locally on your machine. And the things that are wrote in white are something that you can actually use your own laptop in order to implement, to run, to test. So let's start with feature picking. Okay? So when we started in Lumigo, we were a small company. We're still small, but smaller. Um, serverless promotes agility, and we were looking for an agile framework to support it. And we found Kanban to be perfect for us. So Kanban, for those of you who don't know, gives you the ability to have uh, a bucket of issues prioritized uh, by importance. And each time a developer can pick the most important issue, implement it. And that's the interesting point. After implementing it, pushing it to production. There aren't any sprints. You don't have to wait for the end of the week or the end of the month in order to push your, uh, um, uh, your uh, code changes to production. The moment it's done, it's being pushed. And originally, we used Trello, a wonderful tool, but we were young and naive. And as the company grew, we understood that we need a better tool. One of the main issues was that we needed to actually let our management understand um, what are we planning next week and the, next, and the week afterwards. So we created a, a, a mix between Kanban and Sprints, where we have actually a sprint that it runs per, uh, per week. So all developers know what we expect for them at the end of the week, but we are still keeping the capability of, uh, of Kanban where developers, the moment they finish an issue or a task, they can immediately push to production. They don't have to wait to the end of the sprint. By the way, for all of this, uh, uh, Jira is orchestrating everything. And again, um, Jira, Trello, and you'll see it across the, uh, the session today, we're not using any real server to run everything, to run anything. Everything runs in the cloud. Lumigo doesn't have anything that is physical. Um, one, you know, after choosing your, uh, uh, the issue or the item that you want to develop, one of the things that you first do is to, uh, um, you try to architect it, you try to design it, try to understand how you're going to work with it. And each team have their own a list of things that they need to go over, making sure that uh, what they are implementing is the, 
is according to plan. So things like error handling and backward compatibility and things like that. One of the main changes between serverless and other uh, non-serverless development is cost. So it's something that we have on our list, which each, each developer has to go through before actually moving to the implementation itself. A lot of questions like, do we need this DynamoDB uh, index? Uh, do we need to use DynamoDB at all? Maybe using S3 will be slower, but will be much cheaper. So sometimes questions, sometimes performance are not the most important things for us. Many times cost is very important as well, and we choose things that will cost less, even though they might be a little bit slow. But again, we put it on the list, uh, so developers won't forget about it. Um, baking monitor. Again, I said that monitoring is very important. It should be easy for developers to understand what's going on behind the scene, not only during production. Okay, so I'm sure that everybody agrees that during production they need monitoring, and it's important. But I'm talking also about during regular development. Developers develop, use a lot of services, a lot of resources in serverless, and they want to test it and try and see how it works, and suddenly something doesn't work. They want to debug it. And we need to add monitoring, monitoring and debugging capabilities while working on the code, so when we are running it, it will be easy for us. So we have actually two things that we do in order to allow easy monitoring during development. One is actually we are using our own tool, our own platform. We are eating our own dog food. Each of our developers has an account. And we are actually, and each of our developers has its own AWS account and its own Lumigo account. And we are, um, our platform enables automatic provisioning, and it has all kinds of smart uh, monitoring, like uh, reading the configuration of the Lambda, understanding what kind of alerts it needs to create automatically, and it will alert the developer in case something that goes wrong immediately. And one more thing that we use, we're actually uh, baking it into the code itself. We have, um, we uh, have application uh, metrics, uh, custom application metrics, and we have a simple SDK which allows the uh, developer to push uh, metrics into uh, a, an, a, an Elk uh, a solution. By the way, again, this is a managed Elk solution. As I told you, we're not managing anything. Someone else is managing it for us. Testing. So, you know, writing unit tests is something that goes without saying. Okay, every developer needs to write unit tests. You know, there isn't any debate about it. The real problem comes when you need to write end-to-end -end tests. And when working with serverless, end-to-end -end tests are very important, uh, mainly because uh, there are many things that you can't run on your laptop. So, although you have DynamoDB mocks or you have S3, uh, S3 mocks, but what happens when you want to use Athena, uh, SQS, Kinesis, and you know, there are a bunch of other services that, well, you can't run them locally on your computer, or you can't run them easily on your computer. So you actually need to run them and test them on an actual AWS environment. Um, you know, a lot of people tell me and ask me, wait a minute, but what happens? Let's say I'm using very simple services, okay? I'm using API Gateway, I'm using DynamoDB, I'm using S3. What's wrong in using uh, the mocks that are available today? And there are some mocks that enable you to do it. I think it it boils down to two main reasons. Uh, one is mocks are not always the latest and the greatest. Okay? Services, AWS services change all the time. New capabilities, new abilities, and mocks are not always on par. So it happened to us more than, more than once that we needed a, a special capability that was added recently, and the mock doesn't, doesn't give us. Uh, so we actually need to test it on a real on the real uh, 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 application. And another reason is that, well, mocks has bu have bugs. And again, it happen, uh, happened to us more than once that we wrote code, testing it against a mock, and things doesn't work. Uh, we're testing it against a DynamoDB mock or against an S3 mock, and we have something doesn't work. While running the same code in, in our own AWS environment, everything works. Great, perfectly. So we decided that instead of wasting time and uh, uh, trying to debug mocks, we prefer to do everything on a real AWS environment.
And actually, it's also a chance to talk about how our development environment looks like. So we have, each developer has its own laptop or desktop. Um, but in addition, each one of our developers have its own AWS environment. When a, developer come, when a developer joins the company, we create an AWS environment for him. Um, and I think that the main benefit of it is that developers don't step on each other's toes. We started by having a single environment shared by multiple developers, as in, and it didn't work very well. The moment we have uh, an environment for each developer, things just run smoothly. And because we are pure serverless, it doesn't cost us anything. We don't need to provision any RDS server or any VPC-related resource. Uh, we pay eventually for what we use, and don't tell the AWS people here, but because each time we're creating a new account, we're getting one year free. Yeah, I think we are. So, <laughs> so we're saving a lot of money here. Um, and we, have, we do have a single integration environment where our CI-CD uh, runs. Uh, runs the test the, uh, uh, before merging it to master. We have, we have a production environment and we have a monitoring environment. And again, the monitoring environment is our own platform. Our own platform monitors the production. So again, we are eating our own dog food. Uh, and this is also a place where can, we can test all kinds of alpha features and beta features before moving them to actual production. So it's really helpful for us. Okay, so easy environment deployment. So you have serverless, and assuming that you are investing in serverless, there's a very good chance that you are using more than just lambdas. Okay, you're using lambdas, you are using multiple lambdas, uh, DynamoDB tables, S3 buckets, and so on, and so on, and so on. And you have multiple services, and it becomes very difficult to coordinate the installation of all these services. So you have some services where that, that create resources that other services depend on them. And OK, it's very hard if you try to explain a new developer, or even existing developers, what should they do when deploying the services? What's the right order? So we developed an internal tool. We call it an Uber deploy that actually knows the right order. So it's very easily to, whenever we're adding a new service to our system, we're adding it to the uh, Uber deploy, which automatically organizes the other services according to the right order. And, um, uh, and not only that, it also knows uh, uh, to take the latest, latest changes from Git in case you don't have the latest version. So all the developers need to do is just click on Enter, and automatically the Uber deploy will pull all the relevant changes from all the services that we have in the system build them, whatever language uh, uh, we use in specific services, build them, and push them to their own AWS environment. So again, what, what, what's the nice thing about here is that even new developers that are joining the company don't need to understand on day one the entire architecture and how everything works, because really it becomes very complicated very fast. All they need to do is to run this. Yes, so over time they'll understand how the architecture looks like, how everything is running. But right now, they have a single ticket to handle this specific service. And in order to test it, they still need the entire system running. And it helps them do it very fast. Um, so during testing, again, we want to automate things as fast as, pos as easy as possible. And we are using uh, various great tools that we love. So we have formatting. And we're using Black for Python and, uh, and Prettier for Node.js. We love static typing. We think it's important. So we use MyPy. And we use PyLint for the linting. And again, because it's important for us to allow easy testing, we've uh, encapsulated everything in a single script. Okay, so each one of our repos, again, in, in each slide, almost I think in each slide, there's a, a link at the bottom showing, us, showing the actual example on a git gist. So you can copy it, use it. Um, so we've encapsulated all these utilities in a single script uh, that is shared among all of our repos and all our, of our services. So when a developer makes a change, adds a new code, change a test, add the test, do whatever he thinks needs to be done, all he needs to do is to run this script in every repo that we use. And this script will automatically run all the checks that are needed to verify that what he did didn't break anything. 
Again, that, that's what I'm talking about, easy testing. They don't need to think what kind of checks do I need to run in order to make sure that it didn't break anything. We baked everything um, either using a, a scripts or using tools that we wrote. And remember I told you uh, we prefer to find issues locally before finding them remotely. That's why we uh, use uh, git, uh, git hooks. Because again, the, t the checks that I showed you earlier, the formatter and the linting, again, these are things that developers might forget, run them, or might, I don't know, they make, made a commit, pushed it, and didn't run all the tests. So, because they forgot. So instead of letting the, the build job fail on a, on a CI CD platform, uh, they can find it locally while doing the commit itself. So using Git hooks, we're using ASCII, ASCII for uh, Node.js, and pre-commit uh, for Python. Okay, so we finish uh, the testing and we are ready for deployment. So we are using GitHub. Um, again, we're not managing our own Git repository. Uh, we're using GitHub and we're using the GitHub flow. And one of the main changes, differences between the GitHub flow and the regular Git flow is that in GitHub flow, the moment you merge something into master, it, uh, it automatically being pushed to production. And I'll be honest with you, we love it. Uh, although it puts a lot of responsibility on the developer's shoulders, um, we really believe in developers in Lumigo and really want to give them the capabilities to make the decision on their own. Um, we don't have any QA department or DevOps department. Again, this is, some, this is the power that serverless gives us. So. Uh, we're giving our developers a lot of power in order to make changes to production without going through a lot of bureaucratic uh, nonsense. Okay, so we use CircleCI as our build server, and we have uh, five uh, uh, gates. We are using testing and linting. Again, the same thing that runs locally, but we also need to make sure that they pass it on our integration server. We are running the integration test themselves. Um, uh, we're using code coverage. Uh, we're using code cov for code coverage. It gives us, in addition for the actual code coverage in this current run, it also gives us the trend. And we're making sure they're not going down under a specific uh, level. Um, we're using we, uh, uh, code reviews are mandatory as part of the, uh, uh, of the PR that we open in, uh, in Git. And we are doing security review. By the way, and actually it's a question to you, right now we are doing manual security review. If you know of any good audit security tools that can do automatic job, I'll be more than happy if you can talk with me after, uh, after the, the session. We are right now researching and searching for one. And we are ready to push to production. So everything passed, all the gates passed. And we're ready to push to production. So right now in production, in order to push to production, we're using uh, uh, two uh, uh, frameworks. We're using serverless. Up until now, serverless was around 100% of our entire uh, deployment flow. Just recently, we, start, we added CDK. And I must say that we love it. It's a great tool and I highly recommend. And by the way, tomorrow there's a session, there's uh, tomorrow, yeah, with you, Richard. Uh, um, on CDK, so I urge you to join. And again, we don't use serverless, uh, pure serverless. Uh, we actually wrap it with our own uh, scripts, uh, mainly because a lot of our services, a lot of our services use all kinds of flags, depending on the environment. So for example, on a development environment, we use one shard per kinesis, and in the production environment, we use 10 shards, again, to save money. So different configuration depending on the environment. And uh, we created a single script that will uh, uh, encapsulate the decision here. So again, developers, whenever they want to install a specific service, don't need to think what's the right configuration that I need to give uh, in order to install this service on my environment. It's being done automatically for them. And that, that script uh, uh, ensures that. And again, you can use, we have a boilerplate of the, uh, of the script and you can use it. And after deployment, we are ready for monitoring. 
And as I told you, in order to monitor, we are using our own environment and our own platform. And actually, it's a chance also to show to you. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, oh. Okay, so actually we are using two mechanisms in order to monitor our environment. One, we are using um, actual alerts. Okay, so we have, uh, let's see if I'm seeing it right. Okay. So we have, we've created uh, uh, a special uh, uh, alerts mechanism that enables you, depending on the configuration of the, uh, of the Lambda, decides what is the best alert and what's the best thing to do in case something bad happens. So again, if the Lambda, for example, is connected to a Kinesis stream, check what is the iterator edge, and so on and so on. Um, and so this is proactive, okay? So if something happens, it will automatically send us a message. And we also do exploratory. So for example, you have the ability to actually uh, 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 go to our list of functions, and actually see the list of errors, of list of problems that, uh, uh, that we have. So for example, if we got that, so for example, we got, this, uh, again, this is a demo environment. So for example, we have a problem in one of the services that I just developed and pushed. I have the ability to actually go to the specific error and actually view the entire transaction from top to bottom, the entire flow. Uh, actually, and also pull the entire logs that are right from CloudWatch. Again, by the way, just, just by using the platform doesn't mean that we stopped using the regular debugging information that each developer is using. So we're still pushing things to uh, CloudWatch and still looking at the logs themselves in order to debug. But the best thing here is actually our ability to look into more uh, uh, things that usually uh, uh, developers don't write into logs because usually, no, it will make logs too big. So for example, things of all kinds of HTTP requests, what are the responses? So for example, in this uh, example, there was an, uh, a request against DynamoDB, which failed because one of the attributes was, uh, was empty. And usually, if a developer didn't bake the specific um, login information into his code, it's very hard to get this information. And again, because we do it automatically, we pull all the information and help us debugging. Uh, Excellent. Let's go to. Uh, yep. Great. So, um, in addition to the uh, tools that I showed you in the platform that I showed you, we're also developing a lot of other open source tools to help developers develop things for serverless. We've just released, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Lomigo CLI, uh, developed by the Burning Monk, um, which uh, does a lot of unknown stuff that you don't like to do in serverless uh, in a click of an enter. So go and try it. Um, here are, for example, all kinds of things that are very annoying, and you can do it automatically. Um, excellent. And one last thing, uh, you can try a platform for free. Just go to our website, uh, click on free trial, and you can uh, 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 use it on your own environment. You can play with it uh, on your own development environment, whatever you like. Uh, that's it. Questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, Rollbacks? Rollbacks? Yeah, okay. Uh, it's a great question. No, we don't do rollback. We, again, we detect the issue as fast as possible and we try to fix the issue. Right now, we are not doing rollback. I don't know, maybe in the future it will change. I'm not saying that, that that's the right answer. That, that's what we do right now. Okay, that's it. Thank you.